Tom briefly flirted with the idea of going to Cambridge, but he wasn't an academic. In his last year in England, he played cricket the length and breadth of the United Kingdom. He squandered his family's wealth, and his father, dissatisfied with his son's progress, hauled him back to Melbourne. And so Tom Wills came back to Melbourne at the end of 1856. He was 21 years of age. And within two days of returning to Melbourne, he walked onto the Melbourne cricket ground to play cricket. The Age newspaper said that he was so good looking that women swooned in the stand when he took guard. The men were immediately envious because literally within hours it was recognised that he was the finest cricketer in the colony and he revolutionised cricket when he came back to Melbourne. He had an amazing impact. If you could imagine someone with the looks of a Hugh Jackman or an Errol Flynn, but with the skills of a Mitchell Johnson or a Ricky Ponting, you might have an idea of the impact he had on cricket down in Melbourne. He was the best captain. He was by far the best bowler and he was a brilliant batsman. Politicians couldn't wait to shake their rather grubby hands with his as he brought luster to the state of Victoria. He captained the Victorian team to repeated victories over New South Wales. Back then, when Tom used a cricket bat, it was a slim piece of wood, not this sort of wood you might see in a big bash game where a cricket bat has mutated into a railway sleeper. It was a slim piece of wood that Tom used, but of all the paraphernalia in cricket, it was a cricket ball that was closest to his heart. He changed the way bowling was conducted. Back then in the 1850s, this is how you bowled in cricket. You bowled like you were a lawn bowler, or you bowled like that champion Sri Lankan fast bowler, Malinga, horizontally. You weren't allowed to raise your arm above the horizontal. Tom Will said a bowler should not be fettered at all like that. And he argued vociferously that a bowler should bowl in the vertical plane. And in arguing for that, he changed the course of cricket in this nation forever. He became our first celebrity cricketer his name was literally everywhere. In 1858, he'd been back in the colonies for two years. When the cricket season ended, there was no organised football. And in the middle of 1858, he wrote what I regard as our single most important sporting letter. He wrote that these colonies should form a football club, that they should have a game of our own not someone else's game, a game of our own. And he sat down in a pub in Melbourne with three other men and they wrote the first rules of what became our national indigenous game, the most watched game in the nation, Australian rules football. They formed the first club, the Melbourne Football Club, and Tom Wills became the first captain of that first club. He shaped the rules and he was the dominant player he was a remarkable individual. And after creating that team, he moved to Geelong and the second team was created. Tom Wills created this unique game in winter and in summer was and remained our dominant cricketer. <laughs>